We are a team of chemists and data scientists, which is a pretty unique combination, here at Indiana University and the University of Copenhagen. And we're trying to learn the rules of how to make fluorescent materials and really to combine data backed approaches to make them faster and better than anyone else has done it before. At the heart of our project is a new material that we call SMILES, which is the brightest fluorescent material that has been made. And this project is sponsored by the NSF DEMREF program, which gives us the mandate to use data to really explore what we can really use these materials for in optical materials design. Basically what SMILE does is that um, organic uh, fluorophores, I mean molecular dyes, usually when they get into the solid state, when they get close together, turn off their fluorescence. What SMILE does is it's an additive we add to the dyes and then they get separated. And that allows them to turn on their fluorescence in the solid state, become extremely bright materials. And also that gives predictability because we know that the properties the dyes have in solution now manifest again in solid state, in crystals, in nanoparticles and in thin films. And that's a breakthrough, I would say, actually in uh, organic materials. If you are in the scientific community, and particularly if you work in biology or in medical science, you will know that fluorescence is the key tool. I mean, that's really the most sensitive tool to look what goes on inside cells and inside living organisms. So coming up with new materials that are more fluorescent and much brighter than what we had in the past actually moves the limit for what we can see in many disciplines. It is a very important uh, area of research. The molecular property of fluorescence is something that can be found in all kinds of different applications, bioscience, optics, this sort of thing. Uh, the thing that makes SMILE such a unique platform is because it's so versatile, it's able to play in a lot of different spaces. So it can be used for biolabeling, or it could be used to make uh, a laser that would be used for medical purposes. So our vision for the future of SMILES is to invite collaborators in to take advantage of what these, what these materials can do. SMILES overcomes this big problem because now, even in a solid state platform, you get the same optical performance and furthermore, we have demonstrated that you can put them inside cavities and they still behave exactly the same way. So this is really a true advantage, bringing organic molecular systems to be integrated with photonic devices without compromising on any optical properties. What the NSF's DEMREF program really challenged us to do is embrace data in whatever form made sense for the project. And for us, what made sense is the fact that there are 100,000 dyes out there. We can't wrap our head around 100,000 dyes. A key part of our SMILES gateway is to build up the data and computational resources to make up the cyber infrastructure that is critical for big data approaches. SMILE cyber infrastructure consists of SMILE-specific data extraction through natural language processing, and they will be deposited into our new SMILES databases. Scientists interact with the applications in the SMILES Science Gateway. They will conduct web scraping and extraction of data from the literature and do computational chemistry and data mining through the SMILES Science Gateway. We will uh, be able to harvest a lot of the data out in the literature and uh, from that uh, combine that with theoretical calculation of properties so that a much larger set of dyes becomes available for us in the design of new materials and combining that with the SMILES technique we can actually very fast make new materials because we can find the right dyes in the literature and then we can actually get the same properties in the solid state because of the SMILES concept. Using a workflow that automates the sequence of computational steps, we will generate a lot of quantum chemical data on molecules, along with metadata that tells you about the structure of the molecule, the level of theory used, the electronic excited states, emission energies, and all the data and the metadata will be archived into a quantum chemical database that we call COMDB. The quantum chemical database will be used in conjunction with the experimental database EXPDB to develop new data mining algorithms for screening. Multiple quantum chemical models will be developed in this project, including some that are rapid for screening and those that are slower but more accurate. Since experimental data is not likely to be available, we will use learning techniques and some error cancellation ideas that we have 
for the cheaper model to learn from the more accurate model and also utilizing experimental data for calibration as available. If we have, and we do have, 100,000 dyes or more to choose from, they all work in solution. And uh, the last time I looked, nobody wants a liquid technology, right? And, and if you can move into a solid state, then you have an ability to basically plaster the world with technology that does things that we want it to do, rather than having to manage fluids. There's also what SMILES enables. So anything you can imagine that you know works really well as a liquid, well now you can begin to think about using that technology, but as a solid form. That's where SMILES really shines.